I have from the Ministry of Education, the Early Childhood Care and Education Data Collection Drive that's taking place. I have with me Carol Bagwendin, the director of the ECCE, and Michelle Collins, research officer. Good morning, ladies. Good, Good morning, morning, Lisa. How are you guys doing? Good, Fine, thanks. You're not battling the virus, are you? Oh, no, I'm not. Definitely Good. not. Don't worry. We'll make sure you don't get this. We have a wall. Uh, <laughs> pretend there's a wall between you and me, OK? <laughs> sure. All right. So tell us about the data collection drive that, that commenced and why it's important that this be done. OK, so we started the data collection drive on the 7th of January of this year. It rolls straight into February the 22nd. Coming out from uh, the 2016 concluded uh, consultation, there was need for data, especially where early childhood is concerned. Because whenever we're presenting country data, we only present on uh, the public setting, government, government assisted centers. So basically we have not much information on the private setting. So it was a good way of collecting data to inform what is happening within the private sector, but most importantly to ensure and to monitor quality. Mm -hmm. Because what we want is quality delivery. Yes. So that was the brainchild of the quality assurance, well, the data collection drive, but it's also hinged on our quality assurance framework, which we have in place as well. So are you saying that the private um, institutions have to abide by certain standards? Do yes. they have to get a license? Do they have to be registered? As you find, for example, in the US. Yes, so within our ECC setting, we have our standards for regulating early childhood care and education. It consists of eight standards, and registra registration and licensure is one of them. So in order to operate in Trinidad and Tobago, you must be registered with mm -hmm. the Ministry of Education. So what we found uh, over the last few years, we have a number of centers cropping up that are not registered. Mm -hmm. Once you're not registered, we really don't know where you are. We can't really monitor you. We can't make sure that you delivering a quality curriculum mm -hmm. that will ensure the holistic development of the child. Mm -hmm. I'm going to come back and talk about what those standards are. I'm thinking ratio, teacher-student ratio, and those sort of things. But Misha, what form did the research take? You're the research officer. Did yes, you actually sir. go out and do some of the research? Well, actually, I spearheaded the development of the project plan right. for the data collection drive. Yeah. And of course, I've been working very closely with our curriculum facilitators who are actually out in the field collecting the data. Right, okay. So I will be out with them <laughs> hopefully within the next couple of days. Right. Um, but yes, I'm out there collecting the data with them, just monitoring everything mm -hmm. because that's really a critical part of the whole data collection. And is it a, a sort of a survey type, uh, open or ended uh, survey questions being asked? Uh, what, what form does the research Well, it's not open-ended. Mm -hmm. It is a survey type questionnaire, and the questionnaire focuses on three broad aspects. The first will be basic demographic data in terms of enrollment, this information disaggregated by sex mm -hmm. and age, and we're also looking at teachers, their qualifications, and an additional part of that would be students with special educational needs yes. um, across the entire range. Yes. What sort of standards are you looking at? Because over the weekend, or over the past week, I saw an article, not in Trinidad and Tobago, about a teacher who was fired for dragging a child. Well, it was an autistic child. You must have seen that. I think it went viral. Um, you know, and so what sort of standards are you looking for in these early childhood centers? OK, so we have our broad-based eight standards, registration and licensure, we have quality standards from birth to three because early childhood spans from birth to age eight. Mm -hmm. So registration, and as I indicated before, registration and licensure, quality standards for birth to three, three to five, record keeping, staff-child ratio, mm -hmm. physical environment, health and safety. But it, it is very broad and wide. Yes. But if we really zero in, the, the real platform for all of that is really speaking to quality. Most oftentimes when persons hear quality, they will just think it's the physical environment. Yes. But quality goes beyond the physical environment. When we talk quality, we are talking about uh, 
staff-child ratio, we are talking about assessment, we yes. are talking about physical infrastructure resources for children, we are talking about training, so it spans far and wide. Should parents be looking for a certificate of some measure that is displayed publicly in an early childhood center when they go to register their child? Most definitely. Mm -hmm. We issue a certificate of registration with a unique registration number whenever a center is registered. And uh, it is just not saying registration. In order to, for you to get that certificate, you must have approval from uh, town and country, the electrical inspectorate, mini, um, works and oh, sorry, not works and transport, but WASA. Yes. Yes, fire services. So it's a full, if you, if once you yes. see that certificate, you can rest assured that this person has gone through yes, the wire to get it approved. Through. Following the data collection drive, what's next? Okay, so what's next? There's where Michelle is <laughs> going to come in to start putting all the data together to, um, to analyze. And from there, we are looking at, uh, we have a number of children within our system developing or showing at-risk behavior of special needs. Mm -hmm. So we are looking at training, the pro providing training for the private providers in the areas of special educational needs, as well as lifestyle, because we want children, not only the children, but the staff to be growing healthy and in order to be productive citizens. Of Trinidad and Tobago. Of Trinidad and the and world. Tobago and the world. Yes. yes, so the number to call if you want more information is 622 2181 extension 2224. That's 622 2181 extension 2224. I want to thank you, ladies, for coming in and sharing um, this with us. You want to say something else? Before, yes? we, mo before we end, mm -hmm. uh, we are looking at three modes of data collection. Yes. From any private providers could collect the questionnaire from any of the seven educational district offices. Okay. okay. From our officers who are on the field as well as via email and we have the email address yes, here and it is ecce.datacollection at moe that's ministry of education dot gov dot tt that's ecce.datacollection at moe dot gov dot tt and of course we leave it with the station here so you can call if you want more information and you can also call 622-2181 extension 222 Oh, so parents, if you're putting your children into school for the first time, remember to look for that certificate of registration. If it's not there, move along. Correct? Correct. And maybe they should give you a call and say, go check out this place yes. so that they can be registered as well. Yes. I want to thank you to. very, very much. And I'm going to have you go on again as the term proceeds to find out what's going on with the data collection drive. Okay. Carol Bagwinden, director of the ECCE, and Michelle Collins, ECCE research officer. Keep up the good work. And Thank you happy very new much. Year. And same, same to you. It's not too late to say Happy New Year. Definitely.